So we've talked about the biggest diagram in economics. What about the first diagram in economics? What would you guess the first diagram that anybody learns? Oh, I, it's got to be, a, I, I, I'd guess, something terribly simplistic, which doesn't really reflect the real world. Probably something to do with equilibrium. So, uh, exactly, supply and demand. Let, let me just show you. I, I like to bring along a few host pipes with me. You take that end. This one. Yep, and that end. No. Okay, so let's make a supply and demand. All right, here we go. There we go. So. That's the first diagram that students are taught. The demand curve slopes down, the supply curve copes up. There in the middle, that's equilibrium. So what happens at a magical place where, where X marks a spot? What happens there? This is where uh, the price that people are willing to pay meets the cost that it costs a producer to produce something. And so, what if, so what if we move this? What happens? Then this is, this is equilibrium. Then here. this is a new equilibrium. Now, the whole of, a lot of economic education is about moving these curves up and down, right? It's actually based on Newtonian mechanics. What the, does that mean? So the economists who drew these curves in yeah. the 1870s, they were looking to the physics of the day. They wanted to make economics like physics. And so they looked to Newton's theories and they would say, just as Newton came up with the physical laws of motion, we're going to come up with the economic laws of motion. And the idea of it being laws was important. So the laws of supply and demand, the law of diminishing marginal returns, just give me those back, because the beginnings of this idea that economics could be like a law, I think this has been one of the most powerful and pernicious effects in economics. Once economists realized they wanted to show that eco economics is a science, is repertoire as physics, once they got data, they began to look for the equivalent economic laws of motion. There are no economic laws of design. That, that original idea to be and like that's Newton, your point, is it? That, yes. that actually, that these laws have, be, have been exactly the things that have put us off the trail. Yes, that it was that search to be like physics. And the physics of the day was Newton, and Newton's was mechanics, and he discovered the laws. So economists wanted to be discovering the laws of motion. So it's been like, we, we are going to uncover the laws of how economies work. It's a false goal. Physics envy. F it's physics envy, it absolutely is. With, a, with to... a load of maths. Oh, show it all in maths, because then it makes it really serious science, right? <laughs> and this to me is the other fundamental shift, not just recognizing that economy exists within the living world, but that economists need to stop trying to be like engineers and physicists finding these laws and need to become systems thinkers and realize that the economy is in a complex, ever evolving, adaptive system. And therefore the art is to figure out how to intervene in that system to tweak it and nudge it into the direction we want. <laughs>